This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the all-in-one website building tool. You know what I hate about special relativity? All its mind-bending effects, its consequences, all of that only happens when you're going close to speed of light. For everyday regular speeds, it feels like it has no consequence whatsoever. Or does it? Today, Einstein is going to show us that there is this very specific kind of paradox from special relativity that happens even at jogging speeds. That's right. No imagining going close to speed of light. None of that. It's a paradox that can happen to you and me right now. And once I saw that, it quickly became my most favorite paradox of all times because it made me truly question everything I thought I knew about the past, present, and the future. So if you're ready to see how special relativity can produce mind-bending results even at regular speeds, let's begin. So Einstein, where do we begin? Einstein says, Mahesh, just go to a park, sit on a bench, and imagine there are two stop clocks right in front of you, and your goal is to start them at exactly the same time. I'm gonna stop you right there, Einstein. You said that this is going to be a real paradox that I can experience, but you're already asking me to imagine clocks and stuff. I'm not sure I'm liking where this is going. And Einstein says, no, no, no. This is just a way to gain an intuition. Don't worry about it. We'll actually get to the real stuff. I'm like, okay, cool. Let's see. So to make sure we start at the same time, we'll make it sensitive to radio signals. We'll make sure that when the radio signal hits it, it starts. And so we'll keep a radio transmitter right in between them, such that when a radio signal comes down and hits them, boom. They hit them together at the same time, and as a result, both these clocks start at exactly the same time. And look, they're ticking together. And let's say when it shows five seconds, a jogger just happens to pass by. Now, you look at the jogger and say, hey jogger, did you see that? I used a ray signal to sync both the clocks. They started at the same time. So if this is five seconds right now, that clock out there, far away, must also be at five seconds. Isn't that cool? She says, nope. That's not what happened, because from her frame, she is at rest, and it's everything else that's moving towards her. Einstein reminds us that motion is relative, so it's not like she appears to be at rest. No, 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 she is at rest from her perspective. But why does she disagree, Einstein? Well, let's look at the animation one more time, but from her perspective. So what would it all look like? Here we go. So again, there is a radio signal that comes out, but what's important is that the speed of light is the same in all reference frames. And therefore, she will also see that radio signal traveling outwards at exactly the same speed in all the directions. Now, if these clocks were at rest, then sure, they would hit both the clocks at exactly the same time, but they're not at rest. They are moving to the left. Therefore, this clock will run into the light, will get hit first. And since this clock is moving away, the light has to catch up to it, and so it will hit, get hit a little later. So if you have a look at it, look at it carefully, you can see this clock, this clock will start first. There it is, it's starting already. And then a little time later, this clock starts. And that's why from her frame, they did not start at exactly the same time. This one started first. And so when it is at five seconds, you can see it is not really at five seconds. It is slightly ahead, ever so slightly, but it's ahead and that's the reason why she said, nope, because according to her, it's already past five. This is what we call the relativity of simultaneity. Events that are happening for me right now could have already happened for somebody else. And I know we have talked about it in our previous videos because it is at the heart of resolving almost all the special relativity paradoxes, except this one. Because in this one, it causes the paradox. It doesn't solve it. And that's why it is one of my favorite ones. And that's the reason why I wanted to make sure that we are on the same page over here. But here's what's important, folks. The clocks and the light signals, they're all just there to give us an intuition. You don't really need them. Relativity of simultaneity is true in general. Any event that is happening in our frame right now, far away, has already happened some time ago in the jogger's frame. But at this point, I'm like, wait a second, Einstein. I have a question. If we go back to that animation, yeah, this one, well, Remember that we are at jogging speeds over here, about three to four miles an hour. That means in that particular time, this, per this distance that the clocks would have traveled would be incredibly tiny. This means the time discrepancy that we would get over here 
would be so 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 very 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 little and i cannot cannot emphasize how little it's going to be isn't this time discrepancy almost nothing you said einstein we're going to have real paradoxes something that we can really feel at everyday speeds but it feels like that's not happening over here einstein smirks and says yes mahesh good catch in fact this would be of the order of 10 to the power minus 15 seconds at jogging velocities. And uh, we call this a femtosecond. And I'm like, I know Einstein what a femtosecond is. It's nothing, practically nothing. Patience, says Einstein. <laughs> he now asks, what if we had a third clock right in front of this one? Then by the same logic, this would be about one femtosecond ahead of this clock, meaning this would be about two femtoseconds ahead of this clock, right? All right, I think what I understand what you're saying. If you were to look at things that are happening right now even farther away, then it would have already happened for the jogger about two femtoseconds away. And even if I look 100 times farther away, it would have happened for the jogger about 100 femtoseconds ago, which is still nothing, practically nothing, Einstein. And for this, Einstein says, but Mahesh, what if we go a million light years away? Think about it. If we go farther and farther away, that discrepancy becomes larger and larger. From femtoseconds, it becomes micro. Then it can become milli. It'll start becoming seconds. It'll become hours. And pretty soon, if you go millions of light years away, say the distance to Andromeda galaxy, which is about two and a half million light years away, then that discrepancy would be in days. Days. Isn't that real? Whoa. That is in, no, <laughs> no, nice try Einstein. Well, if you now go millions of light years away, now it's going to take millions of years for you to sync up the clocks, which again makes it impractical, right? Well, for that Einstein says, remember Mahesh what I said slightly earlier? But here's, here's what's, what's important, important folks. The, the clocks and the light signals, signals they're they all just there to give us an intuition. intuition. You don't really need them. Any event that is happening in our frame right now, far away, has already happened some time ago in the jogger's frame. That's right. You don't need the clocks. So, so this means if you were to just look up at the Andromeda galaxy, then whatever is happening right now over there from my frame would have already happened in her frame a few days ago. This is it, I think. This is a real consequence of special relativity, a real discrepancy that we are seeing, but at very low speeds. Exactly, says Einstein. And here's why it's paradoxical. Again, if you were to look at things from our frame, let's say we're looking at some faraway planet in the galaxy where there are some alien life form, and maybe it's Monday for them. They're just getting into work, having a meeting to decide, you know, whether they should be invading the Earth or not. So this is a discussion that's happening right now over there from our frame. But from the jogger's perspective, all of this has already happened a few days ago, relativity of simultaneity. Therefore, from her perspective, it's not Monday, it's probably the end of the week, it's Friday, which means they've probably already made the decision, say, to already invade the Earth, and they're already on their way to us. So think about how freaky this is. From our frame, they're still deciding what to do. They haven't made a decision yet, but from her frame, it has already happened. This is called the Andromeda Paradox. What's paradoxical over here? Well, it makes us question whether the future already exists. Because right now, in the jogger's frame, the aliens have already made the decision. But if that is the case, did the aliens have a choice in the first place? Because if they didn't, what about their free will? What about any of our free will? We can't make conscious choices if the future is already determined. But the paradox is, it feels like I can make conscious decisions, right? For example, I built floridphysics.com using Squarespace, the sponsor of this video. But did I have a choice in that? Well, I certainly like to think so because Squarespace comes with built-in templates, which I could quickly customize to create landing pages for myself slash a blog with absolutely no website creation experience. So yes, I, th I think I did a conscious decision and for good reasons. For example, it also has amazing analytics. It shows me just with the click of a button, how much traffic I'm getting, what is the engagement of that traffic, the sales and so much more, all of that in one single place. 
But I think here's the kicker for me. You see, I have almost no website creation experience, so I can get stuck very easily. In fact, I did. I wasn't able to get my website live. So I just contacted their support and within minutes, in my reference frame, of course, <laughs> An agent got assigned and she just resolved the query and she actually got my website live. So I do think that Squarespace is a all-in-one website creation tool for anyone, even people with no experience. So if you want to start for free, can create an online presence for yourself, which I think is gonna be super important in this age, then just go to www.squarespace.com slash floatedphysics. And if you decide to make a purchase, do use the promo code Floated Physics. It'll give you a 10% off on your first purchase at the checkout. The link is also in the description. But wait, you've already made the decision, haven't you? Because the future already exists, right? Right, Einstein? What is going on? Does the future exist? Do I not have free will? What does it all mean? And Einstein says, it means nothing. What? Yep, it doesn't mean anything. Let's go back to the clocks. Remember how from our frame, that clock right now is at five, but from her frame, that clock has already crossed five. Well, what's important is that although that's accurate, it's all in our head. We can't see it yet. Because remember, to see things, we need the light to travel from here to here, and that has not yet happened. So the big question we could ask here is, what would we actually see at this moment? Well, that's quite easy to work out from our frame. Let's imagine that that particular clock is about one light second away, just to keep things simpler. This means that the light will take one second to reach us. So we're not going to be seeing how the clock is right now, but we will see how it was one second ago. Now, since we know that right now the clock is at five, one second ago, it must be at four. So that's what we should be seeing. And if we take a picture, that's what we would get. But what would she see? Well, she should see the same thing, mainly because she's at the same place as we are, right? Two people at the same place should always see the same thing because the same light signal would have reached her as well. Wait a second. Since they're both seeing exactly the same thing, does that mean now they're, they both will agree on what's happening right now far away? Does that mean that whatever we were saying is actually right and whatever she was saying was wrong? Well, I sense is not quite. And this is where it gets really, really interesting. We're getting closer to resolving the paradox. So, so wait for it, okay? Even though we both are looking at the same photo, we will still disagree upon what's happening right now. We'll still have a proper, accurate story. So imagine the conversation between these two, okay? We would be telling her, look, that clock is one light second away. That means this photo has been traveling for about one second. So since the photo is one second old, one second must have passed since this photo this photo was created. And so that clock must be one second ahead of whatever this photo is showing. And therefore it must be at five. That's how we will convince her that, or we'll try to convince her that the clock over there must be at five. But what will she say? She will say, uh-uh, Mahesh, that particular clock is right now one light second away. But it's traveling towards me, which means when this photo was created, when this photo was just sent from, from the clock, it was slightly farther away. It was more than one light second away. That means that photo has been traveling for more than one second. So more than one second has passed since the creation of this photo. And therefore that clock right there must be reading slightly more than one second and boom, it should be more than five seconds. Both of them still agree, or sorry, disagree on what's happening far away, even though they're looking at the same photo. Okay, you got all of that? Just to be clear, we both will see exactly the same things. However, because we disagree upon, disagree on how long this light has been traveling for, that's why we will disagree about what currently is happening, what's happening right now. Now let's apply all of this to the Andromeda case. If we had perfect telescopes because of which we could see distant planets, let's say in Andromeda galaxy, what would we see? Would we see the aliens right now? Of course not. Because it is two and a half million light years away, light takes about two and a half million years to reach us. What we will see right now is how things were about two and a half million years ago, which means we'll probably see some bacteria and everything. To see the aliens, we will have to wait. 
a few million years later. Finally, we are now seeing the aliens discussing. Now, we will both see them discussing about whether they want to invade the Earth or not. And this is when I will tap on her shoulder and say, hey, remember that day two and a half million years ago when we first met? That was the day when this discussion happened. And she will say, uh-uh, that discussion had already happened about four to five days prior to that. And then I would probably ask her, oh yeah, then what actually happened on that day according to you? And she was like, I don't know, the light has not yet reached me, okay? But I do know that four or four, about four or five days had already passed. And so now we will have to wait another four or five days to get the new image of what the aliens have decided. And finally we will see, hey, the aliens are coming towards us. And now she will say, hey, hey Mahesh, remember the question you asked me, what actually happened from my frame two and a half million years ago? Well, they made the decision to come to, to invade the earth that particular day. So you see, this is how we will be only able to talk concretely about what happened in the past. We will never be able to talk about what's happening right now because the light has not reached us. And it's okay if we disagree about the past. Who cares about that? Because it has already happened. So it's only once things have happened, we can retroactively, retrospectively, okay, whatever, retrospectively talk about when we would have happened and we'll disagree about the past. That's it. And as a result, we'll also disagree about what's happening right now in the Andromeda galaxy, but it doesn't matter because the light from there cannot reach us right now. We can't see what's happening right now. It has no effect on what's happening. It has no effect on us right now. And therefore, it has no physical significance. What's happening right now is completely pointless. You see, the whole, what, what relativity is teaching us is that the fact that light takes time to travel from one place to another allows different people to have different nows far away. The farther you go, more the discrepancy. But for the same reason, it has no physical significance because no information can travel from there to here right now. So now has no meaning whatsoever, no physical meaning whatsoever. So what about the future? Well, if now itself has no meaning whatsoever, forget about the future. <laughs> Why would future have any physical meaning whatsoever? I mean, so if you wanna think about whether the future really exists or not, it's all philosophical. As far as science or physics is concerned, none of that really matters. But Einstein, I have such a hard time, you know, accepting this. How can I just accept the fact that this idea of now makes no sense and just let go of it? Because there must be something happening right now in Andromeda, isn't it? So how can it be different from different people? Well, Einstein said this is understandable. We think that things right now has a physical significance because we live in a small world. I mean, think about it. If on the other end of the world, if some server, let's say, stops working, then it will have impact on me almost instantly. This is the reason why we think that, you know, things right now can affect me right now. <laughs> because the, the time it takes, the time of travel, the time it takes for information to travel on Earth is so, so small, we think things are happening instantly. Therefore, our intuition is built in a world where light travels almost instantly. And that's the reason why we think that, you know, there must be something happening over there right now. There must be something happening over there right now. Even though we can't see it, it must exist. That's the intuition that we have developed in ourselves. But if you try to stretch this intuition far away, it breaks because this is a very local intuition that we have. It doesn't work in the grand scheme of things. I think that's the biggest takeaway from special relativity, that the idea of now far away really has no meaning. I'll see you.